So I'm still Bill Magro. Um, <laughs> welcome back after lunch. Um, organizers asked me to take about 15 minutes and tell you about Intel MPI and our implementation on the on the Xeon Phi coprocessor, uh, or more generally the Xeon Phi coprocessor based clusters. Um, so I tossed a few slides together to show you that. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is introduce you to the processor. How many people know something about this? Um, not everybody, though. So really quickly, um, this is a mini-core chip that we've developed. Its code name is Knight's Corner. You may have heard it under that name. Um, it's been branded Intel Xeon Phi, Intel registered trademark, Xeon Phi trademark coprocessor. Um, it's not an accelerator. It's not a processor. It's a coprocessor. Um, what it is is, is a mini-core coprocessor, um, but it's built up on top of Intel architecture. Um, all Xeon Phi's have 50 or more cores. Um, in the first generation, it comes as an add-in card. You can see that in the upper right-hand corner. Um, it connects in to the platform through a PCI Express by 16 slot. Uh, it's a double wide card. Um, and it has, um, it has, there's a lot more details. If you're interested in the internals of those chips, you can go do a search in hot chips. We give a very uh, open presentation on hot chips by the architect recently, George Kresos. I'm not gonna get into that today, but onboard memory, GDDR5, it's a very high onboard memory bandwidth. It plugs into a Xeon-based platform, which in turn has a standard memory subsystem. Um, <clears throat> Woody gave you uh, an overview before of, of some of the things that we did for access to InfiniBand, uh, both the Mellanox and the former QLogic, now Intel TrueScale uh, IB. Uh, we're very proud of that work. We think it's pretty nifty and it enables some neat things. So I'm gonna take you through some of the programming models and our philosophy why we did that and what it enables, and then ultimately get to the Intel MPI implementation. Okay. So in the upper left, you see what is uh, the traditional offload model, and here the green arrows kind of represent MPI traffic. Uh, the red arrows represent some other type of data movement and control uh, traffic, which will allow us to offload computations. Um, so if you think of a very simple two-node cluster here, the, the little black line along the left might represent InfiniBand, uh, logically, you're doing MPI messages back and forth between your Xeon processors or MPI ranks on the Xeon processors. And then each of those ranks is made faster somehow through offload to the coprocessor, which is on the right. Um, inside each of these chips, we're just running standard parallel programming models. So OpenMP, pthreads, uh, threading building blocks, Silk Plus, uh, your favorite thing. Okay, but what, what we were able to do through the, uh, the work with Open Fabrics software that Woody took you through in some detail a few minutes ago uh, is actually open up some other models. Um, and I'll show you how this is possible. One is what we call native model, where um, to use the words of someone out during the break, the Xeons are used as, as uh, space heaters. Um, and the Xeon Phi coprocessors are actually the compute engines, not necessarily an optimized power performance scenario. But the point is it's possible. You'd like to use the Xeon Phi coprocessors as native hosts that are running MPI directly, communicating directly, logically. Uh, that works. And Woody showed you the software stack we put together that actually allows zero copy transfers directly between uh, these endpoints. And we're, we're quite, we're quite uh, excited about that capability. Um, on the right is what we call symmetric mode. And here, every node is constrained in the sense that you have a Xeon node and you could have one or more uh, microprocessors. But beyond that, when you put those all together, you really do have a heterogeneous network of individually homogeneous network nodes. Um, if you think of the Xeon Phi coprocessor as a network node, everyone has an IP address, you can load up MPI ranks, and that allows you to run a more symmetric model where anyone can communicate with anyone. Um, and then, of course, the challenge moves to load balancing the calculation, right? You have different processors with different uh, compute characteristics. Okay. So how is this possible? Um, like I said, the, the Xeon Phi, or Mike Mini Integrated Core, our shorthand name for it, is just a mini core chip. And we chose to put Linux on this. And once we put Linux on it, we were able to basically take everything that we're familiar with on the Xeon processor and make it available on the coprocessor as well. So it's a Linux standards base. Um, the first thing we do on top of the PCI Express connection is abstract. Um, is abstract that as a network. That's what the work that Woody told you about this um, earlier this afternoon. Um, and we expose it as um, an open fabrics fabric. And once we do that, then everything else just layers on top. Um, so we've got two connected Linux hosts with a standard networking interface between them. 
Um, and so we call SCIF, we call that SCIF, which is the symmetric communication interface. That's a building block. Um, OFED, everybody knows. IP is another thing we layer on top. Uh, Woody referred to that earlier as a virtual ethernet. Uh, but the high performance paths are the ones that take advantage of the DMA engines that exist in our own Knight's Corner chip or exist on the InfiniBand cards. And the whole idea here is to maximize you know, the use of standard programming models, standard software, and of course, reuse your code. So porting to an Intel Xeon Phi is extremely quick. You, of course, have to have highly parallel code. You have to have a lot of vector content if you want to get performance, but at least you can port and get the thing working quickly and then use standard techniques to inform your next step. Okay. So now into MPI. Um, on the left is what you would do with a standard cluster, right? To build, you might use something like MPI CC. This is MPI ICC, which means use the Intel compiler, um, you know, dash O, hello. Uh, and then run, you would do a typical MPI run with a host file, right, in the name of your program. And the host file might contain the name of your host. Uh, to now run over this symmetric mode that I described, the heterogeneous um, cluster of homogeneous endpoints, uh, you would do two compilers. You build one binary for the Xeons. You build one binary for the for the Xeon Phi. Um, in this case, we've given the Xeon Phi binaries a .mic suffix. Uh, we have an environment variable you can set in Intel MPI, and beyond that, um, that will pick up the right. Uh, there's nothing you need to do. It'll pick up the right binary, and you can run a heterogeneous MPI job. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. There's a lot more controls than that, but that's that's the basics of it. Okay. So this is a very simplified diagram of um, consolidating everything Woody told you in a half an hour in the upper right-hand corner. Um, MPI sits on top of Intel MPI. Intel MPI talks, uh, can talk directly to OFED verbs. It can also talk through DAPL. Um, there's the CCL proxy, uh, which um, is able to pipeline messages and find the fastest paths through the platform. Um, we also have direct access from the InfiniBand HCA uh, into the application memory, whether it sit on the Xeon or on the Phi using the mechanisms that Woody described. Um, and then we finally have this IB SCIF driver that plugs into Open Fabrics as well and allows us to abstract the PCI Express network as, uh, I'm sorry, PCI Express connection as a network. So three separate paths, um, all using Open Fabrics verbs. Um, and what we're able to do then is have the MPI make the selection of what's the fast, the appropriate path for any given end pair of endpoints and also the fastest path. Uh, and our MPI does that automatically. So we encapsulated this with three separate DAPL providers. <clears throat> There's one, um, which just the main one, we're calling that CCL Direct. That's the one that you would use that, that does the direct communication just like you've always done, Xeon to Xeon, uh, but also allows you to do Xeon to Phi, Phi to Phi, um, and Phi to Xeon on remote hosts. Um, on, uh, and then we've got one inside the box called IB SCIF. Um, and then finally, the proxy. So those are our three connectors. And on the next slide, I'll show you how we use those. Um, so what we had to change in Intel MPI um, was the following. Intel MPI has always had the ability, since it was first conceived, to be uh, an interconnect independent MPI and a um, multi, uh, or one that was able to deal with multiple fabrics. So since the product came out about a decade ago, um, it was able to use shared memory inside the node for optimized communication, InfiniBand between nodes over DAPL initially, um, over Open Fabrics Furbs later. Um, it was able to use TCP sockets and so on. What it never was able to do, though, was open up multiple um, providers, multiple fabrics as to talk to the same endpoint. So for every, if I was a Xeon, I was talking to another Xeon network, I would talk over TCP or over InfiniBand, but not both simultaneously. So what we did here is if we had all that infrastructure, we just turned on the ability to use two or more things simultaneously to a given endpoint. Uh, and how we're using that in, on Phi is that um, these different providers have different performance characteristics for large messages, for small messages. Um, so for example, um, the, the ones with small arrows are the fastest small message path between the two points that I'm connecting. So this would represent two Xeon nodes. And um, <clears throat> this, the CCL Direct, the coprocessor communication link direct, is the fastest way to link up a Xeon and a mic for small messages. But the IB SCIF actually gives you the highest bandwidth, because we can take advantage of that DMA engine that's driving the PCI Express directly. So now our MPI is able to actually um, use both of them simultaneously and also do cutovers, like a traditional cutover between Eager and Rendezvous protocol. 
um, and take advantage of both. And, and with this, we've been able to optimize the bandwidth and latency characteristics for all pairs in the system. And we can show you more details if you're interested, but at a high level and with just a few minutes to talk today, I wanted to show you that. Okay. So I'm gonna wrap up a bit early so we have time for questions, but what we've done is we've combined a bunch of technologies uh, to make it possible to treat uh, a network of Xeon-based nodes with Xeon Phi coprocessors plugged in as a heterogeneous network. Um, and that includes the LSB compliant Linux OS that runs on the cards, that's a building block, the abstraction of the PCI Express um, connection as a fabric, which is critical, and thank you to Open Fabrics for making such a wonderful uh, software infrastructure that made that possible for us. Um, then the direct access using the peer-to-peer -peer techniques, uh, doorbell and address, address mapping techniques that Woody told you about before. And with all those um, combined with the update to the Intel MPI to simultaneously use multiple paths, we're able to make all this work. So thank you. So any questions? I finished in 10 minutes, so. Uh, we're, yeah, this is all open source. I mean, the Intel MPI is not an open source product, but everything else is open source. And uh, yeah, to the you know the next generation of add-in cards, we plan to carry this stuff forward. But the next generation Intel uh, What about them? Yes, yes, all this stuff carries forward uh, to future coprocessors. There's nothing unique to the Knight's Corner chip in that. Are there any other questions? No? Okay, DK, you get extra time. Come Thank on you. Down. <laughs>